Okay, let's start this session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 900 session. Myself, Archie Dissel, I'm your host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will try to help you out. So let's move ahead and talking about uh, our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is India, one of kind co-parting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, we bring we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement, and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is persona-based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey here. You can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced rule based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental level certification, we are providing you AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, guys, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and uh, if you want any certification, you can connect with us. Certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration models and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punekas. Emerging technology community for Suratkas, Azure Tech community for Nagpurkas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training, uh, Navjoti Barua, he is a Microsoft certified trainer, currently works with Synergetics as an AVP technology. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In this session, we are providing you AI 900 complementary learning achievement batch. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch. Make sure, guys, you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for upcoming updates. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic, uh, our speaker. He will continue ahead. Yeah, thank you, RC. Okay, very good morning to all of you. So hope you can hear me and hope you can see my PPT. So can you hear me and can you see my PPT? Okay, fine, thank you. 
All right, so let me set the context of this today's training. So this, as you can see, it is understanding the core principle of AI 900. So AI 900 is a fundamental of artificial intelligence course from the Microsoft. So here we are going to explore mainly the services around artificial intelligence from the Microsoft Cloud Platform. This would be a kind of overview session, so not going into a deep dive. The idea is to give you the overall, the perspective of the AI ecosystem from the Microsoft Cloud Platform. My name is Navjyoti Barua. Currently, I'm working as a cloud solution architect and AI consultant. So I have been working with multiple technologies and uh, I'm providing consultancy and training service to our client on those technologies. So getting into the this course, like as I say, this is the course around the AI 900, the fundamental to artificial and fundamental of artificial intelligence from the Microsoft Cloud Platform. But what we are going to look at primarily, so we are going to look at the artificial intelligence workload and the ecosystem. So where can I use AI? And uh, what are the services from the Microsoft Azure will allow us to kind of develop the artificial intelligence solutions? An artificial intelligence is backed by multiple technologies, or you can say the principle or an underlying concept. The machine learning is one of them. So we are going to look at so how machine learning is contributing in the field of artificial intelligence today, because these are the backbone of artificial intelligence, whether it is machine learning or deep learning. What we see from the artificial intelligence, because we cannot uh, eliminate the underlying concept of artificial intelligence. Then we can be very specific going after the computer visions. So how the artificial intelligence is used to build solutions around the visuals. The visuals means it could be in a form of videos or maybe in a form of images. So how we can make use of artificial intelligence in the field of the visual perception. Similarly, how artificial intelligence can be used in natural processing language, like uh, by writing a text, by interacting with your applications, writing a command, by speaking over the voice, and so on and so forth. So mainly the language that we are going to use to interact with the AI system come under the natural processing, natural language processing. So why it is called natural language NLP? Because the how human talks between them to do the conversation on a particular topic, the similarly you can do the conversation with the AI system. And that is made possible with the help of the features like NLP from the artificial intelligence. And the time permits, then we are going to talk about the new era of artificial intelligence, that is the generative AI. So let's get into the fundamental of AI concepts. So all of us know the kind of artificial intelligence today we see from in a day-to-day -day basis experiences that we go through, like if you use the Netflix as a application to enjoy a movies, the Netflix can come back and tell you, so what are the movies would you like to see in next 
couple of days or next couple of week. So this is how the Netflix can do the recommendation for you based on your dislike and like. So this is driven by artificial intelligence because there is no human in the uh, Netflix to tell you what movie would you like to see because that is a kind of dan artificial intelligence can see you as a person and your like and dislike and your activities and they will be able to make a decisions to give you the recommendations what you would like to see like that we have been interacting with the voice the virtual assistants like Alexa or maybe Google. So we give instruction, hey Alexa or hey Google, so do this for me and do that for me. So this is what, because it is not a human, it's an application who does job for me. In a Facebook, if I have to go and tag a photo, the Facebook can tell me, so what are the friend that you would be tagging this photo automatically. So Facebook knows your friend list and they can prioritize the what all are the friend that you would be tagging the new photo that you are posting through a Facebook. So we can go on and on. So there are different implementations like knowingly or unknowingly we are experiencing with those applications which is typically driven by artificial intelligence and these applications infuse the human capability that the human do not have to do all these stuffs that application itself is capable of doing these kind of tasks these kind of functionalities what i am talking about one of the most common use in artificial intelligence like unlocking your phone by just putting your face right in front of the phone so this is artificial intelligence so how the phone can recognize you the you are the owner of that particular phone that phone is going to be unlocked by just putting your face right in front of the phone so we see a lot many implementation around us Mainly the face recognition is one of the most used cases like today we can talk about. The most of the application use the face as an identity. <laughs> so you don't have to type your password or username and so on and so forth to get access to a product, to get access to a service, to get access to an object. This is all driven by artificial intelligence. So by now you'll be able to anticipate what possibly artificial intelligence can do for us. Now the question is that how am I supposed to develop that kind of application? So what are the technology that we should know? And how this technology can be used to develop the system that I was talking about just now, who infuse the human capabilities and that's how those applications will put under the category of artificial intelligence base application. Now, when you talk about the common workload, right? So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence through which we can do the predictions by training on the data. Like suppose somebody wants to predict the number of car to be manufactured. In the year 26, 27 today. By looking at the data from the past, maybe by looking at from the past five years data, I should be able to tell the manufacturer how many car to be manufactured for next financial year. So that predictions or maybe classifications kind of task can be performed by the machine learning so your applications can do the prediction and without human so it is an integral part of the artificial intelligence what we are discussing at this moment it's a subset of 
AI. AI is a subset, but there are many subset of that particular service. We can put them together to build AI system for our customer. Computer vision also a kind of functionalities from the AI through which we should be able to analyze the visuals. The visual may be in a form of images. The visual may be in a form of the videos. The video can be kind of recorded videos or maybe streaming, uh, live streaming videos. So we should be able to analyze those videos. We should be able to tell what is going on in that videos, including and identifying the object from the videos, identifying the object from a uh, images. So like um, today, the CCTV camera is taking photo continuously, but those photos, those images those video can be analyzed at real time so what is happening within a system what is happening within an environment so that can be identified with the help of artificial intelligence and lot many actions can be performed subsequently if this is happening what need to be done so the kind of automations today we see from an applications by using artificial intelligence is really, really, uh, you can say really, really significant. So you cannot ignore the fact that how the human task is being eventually delegated to those automations driven by artificial intelligence in the field of computer vision. Now, similarly, that can happen in in the field of text and language also. That's what I talked about the NLP. So how you are going to write a command to get your job done from the artificial intelligence. So what you are going to speak, what language that you would be using to speak in front of the AI application, that AI application can understand your intent and work on that. So bringing human more closer to the artificial intelligence is the primary job around the NLP. Right, so NLP is all about text. Like for example, beyond that also, if somebody has written a review about a product, now I would like to use artificial intelligence to find out the sentiment of the reviews, whether the review is written in positive sentiment or a negative sentiments or a neutral one. Right, so this is something that we can do from the NLP base application. Who can analyze the given text in a form of review, in a form of articles, in a form of technical documents and so on and so forth. And not only that, summarizations like we want to create a summary out of an articles because your ai system understand in and out of the text that you want to make those texts meaningful to your business with the help of artificial intelligence in the field of field of nlp document intelligence also is an ai service through which we can read the document which can be in a form of PDF mainly or a doc. And we should be able to summarize. We should be able to kind of understand the format that is being presented by this document. Like the document could be an invoice. Document could be a bill. Document could be in a form of some kind of uh, uh, the business format, right? So tax calculation form or something like that. It could be a different template that I'm talking about. So how artificial intelligence will recognize or understand those domain specific format of the document and will be able to read the content accordingly and create an aut automation system to process those content that is being read from those documents. 
knowledge mining was always there with the artificial intelligence like it is more the question answering kind of system that you want to build somebody wants to know about the product so i can put that person in a conversation with the ai so ai possibly is going to give all the information related to the product based on the questions that has come from the end user and customers so i can make the ai use of knowledge the huge knowledge but we need to train the ai what kind of knowledge the ai would be using in terms of responding to the end user but yes we can keep talking about the different type of workload here main type of workload what we are discussing from machine learning to knowledge mining but whatever i am talking about machine learning to knowledge mining is a traditional ai the ai who can make prediction the AI who can analyze, who can classify, who can detect object. But beyond that, today we have generative AI, the new artificial intelligence functionalities. So from the generative AI, rather than analyzing, rather than predicting, rather than kind of classifying so generative ai is responsible for creating new original content so content could be in a form of image or a text or a code for the developers so this is primarily used this particular ai is primarily used to create new content generate new content that is something what this AI is capable of. That's how it's called as a generative AI. And it is different from the traditional AI that I'm talking about, right from the machine learning to the knowledge mining. So they are mainly to do the predictions, to give you an answer, or maybe to do as some kind of classifications, right? Some kind of analytics that analyzing image or a videos this kind of job is being done through uh, this workload what we are talking about and how the generative ai is different from the traditional artificial intelligence but another important aspect of artificial intelligence is that principle of responsible AI. So what, what does it mean? So it basically says, if I have to develop an AI system, we need to consider those rules, like you have to apply the fairness. You cannot be biased to a set of people. Because it depends how you build your artificial intelligence. Accordingly, the AI system will behave. So you're not supposed to infuse some kind of bias decisions can be made by your AI system. Or you would be able to completely reliable on the AI system. AI system that the people can trust the system that you would be building. It means it is going to go and enhance the productivities in the real sense. It is not going to play with the human emotions or the human private data. So this is something, or maybe it is not going to do something bad to the human societies. So you need to consider, the people need to rely on the system that you would be building. So if you are creating an error-based system who can do the negative or who can create a negative impact in the society, so that is not being 
accepted during the AI development or AI, uh, the system development, what we are talking about. The privacy and security would be always the cause of concern. Like, so you need to keep or you need to maintain the privacy of the data, which cannot be given to everybody for using the private data. And you should be able to make the secure system that only authorized people can make use of the system. And then the transparency and accountability. I think these are related concepts. The eventually what we are trying to tell that you need to be responsible while you will be developing or building AI system for your customers. OK, so let's go to. Ex let's go and explore what I have been talking about. So how practically we can see them working. Right, so that's how we need to go. Into the implementation, so we'll start with. The fundamental of machine learning, the workload that we discuss uh, from the previous deck. Because as I say, through machine learning, we'll be able to do the predictions, we'll be able to do the classifications, we'll be able to do some kind of associations and the clustering. We'll be able to do some kind of analysis on the data, and after analysis on the data, we should be able to create report with the help of machine learning without the human being. So as long as we'll be able to offload. The human task to the application and we would be calling them as an artificial intelligence space application. So now to get into the inner working of machine learning, so machine learning look like this particular process flow. So what machine learning need first? Machine learning need data. That's what I was talking about. For example, I was given an example. I want to go and do the prediction. So how many car to be manufactured? For a 25-26 financial year from a car manufacturing company under a particular category of the car. So they want to know, they want to use artificial intelligence, they want to use machine learning to tell what would be the number they will be able to sell in the next financial year. Then what machine learning will do then? Number one, the machine learning will go and collect the data from the last five years. So how on that category of the car was sold in the last five years, so let me collect that data and give it to the machine learning to learn from those data. So while the machine learning will learn from the data, this process what we call as a training the data by using some kind of algorithms in a formula called Fx equal to Y. The Y is the ultimate predictions the machine learning is going to make, but they will learn from the X. The X means the features like, OK. So what was the name of the car when it was sold in the last year? Was was it near to a particular festival? OK, and what type of people or maybe the the demographic? Uh, data also being associated impacting. So what class of people are buying what class of cars? So there are would be a lot of correlations. The data that is being collected by the manufacturing 
companies and this will be the data which is basically called as the x it could be an x1 x2 x3 like a column name under which the data is being stored data is being collected in the last five years the objective is to do the predictions on a particular column like the number of car you need to be manufactured for a particular year so that is the problem statement that we are driving through this machine learning process the machine learning pipeline what we are looking at at this moment so training means to learn by the machines so what how they are going to learn they may learn by looking at the relations among the data looking at the trends and the patterns in the data that's how they are going to learn with the help of some kind of algorithms the algorithm is a program that is being used by the machine learning to learn from the data and the outcome of the training outcome of the learning would be a model the model encapsulate the functions that they have learned in the training like you are reading a book the somebody will be asking questions then you should be able to answer from your brain because you do not need the book at that point in time so that is the model so model is going to encapsulate all the learning that has happened during the training of the data and model can be used by any applications to do the ultimate the requirement that you have asking for from the model like in our case the model would be able to predict the number of car to be manufactured in a particular financial year by looking at the data from the past the fx equal to y is the formula the y would be the predictions the model is going to make on the inferencing data the similar kind of data because the the business where the data is being trained is a car manufacturing unit so it cannot be something else it means your predictions need to be relevant on what data the machine learning was used to train on okay so that is something that we will go now going into the next one so putting things together So for, as I said, the types of machine learning that you can see right here. So machine learning is being divided into two, the supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. There is an example also to take a look, the regressions and classification the type of machine learning that we are talking about so what goes and how machine learning learned and what machine learning is going to do the predictions this is being explained with the help of example that you can see out there now supervised learning is saying that okay uh, to, to layman context, if you want to understand what do we mean by supervised or a label data that we are talking about. Suppose I am going to develop an application so who can recognize a particular fruits. The fruits may be an apple or a orange. So I take a photo of apple and orange and I will give it to the machine learning to learn. But while I'm giving those photo to the machine learning, I'm telling these are the apple and these are the orange. Then the machine learning will learn 
from the rest of the attributes like colors, the size and shape and the other attributes they will find on their own. Apart from just a label that I put, the tag that I made, there are many things the machine learning need to learn from that images to identify, yes, this is the image of an apple or this is the image of an orange. To predict eventually after learning from those images. So while I'm giving an image to the machine learning, I'm telling it, but I did not tell the rest of the property from the orange and the apple to the machine learning, the machine learning will find on their own. This is the supervised machine learning and unsupervised. In fact, we don't tell what object they need to train on. Unlike like apple and orange, we just go and give the set of images, for example, the flowers. They will try and learn from those flowers and they will try and put the flowers in a one category who share the common properties or who share the similar, similar property and attributes, something like this. So the machine learning is a big subject and not only a machine learning. So if the machine learning is not capable of the predicting or classifying or identifying an object. So we can go into a, another subset of the machine learning called deep learning. So deep learning is capable of resolving the complex data, complex problem. So that is also another a subject which is based on the neural network. The neural network algorithms will go and learn from the data. This is an extensive learning that deep learning can make up from your uh, the data that you have given to either machine learning or deep learning. So this is again, we are revisiting the first things like this is how the machine learning work, as I said. But those model may not be a one time creation because model need to be evaluated. The evaluations is a part of the model creations, so whether the model is able to do the predictions with the accuracy or not. So what score the model has make? What model has scored based on we can retrain the model with new set of data until the model is going to give the predictions based on our need. Right, so this life cycle will keep on continuing until we get the model that we have asked for. So modeling of your or training on the data is just not a one time job. So in the process of the training, the evaluations on the model also going to happen to identify the model, how accurately the model can predict. So what is the overall performance of the model? So all would be taken into considerations and keep remodeling, keep retraining the same model all over again in this process because this is part of the pipeline. We do not have to do explicitly. The model evaluations is the part of this life cycle, what we are talking about. Because until you evaluate the model, we won't be able to take this model to the productions to make predictions, to do the classifications and clustering, based on the kind of algorithms that we use to learn from the data. So as I said, the another subject of the machine learning is a deep learn. Now deep learning is a kind of algorithms who learn from the data like human learn. So they are basically compared with the human learning process because human learn with the help of some neuron. 
the neuron from the human brain is being used to learn from any kind of events or situations or any kind of the source. The similarly also in the field of artificial neural network, which is human neural networks and getting converted into artificial neural network. So these are a neuron and they are interconnected, we call as a network. There would be an input, the hidden and the output layer of the neural network. As you can see, the input value is X and the weight of the values. So that is the two terms essentially used by artificial neural network. This neuron is a function that operates on input value X and the weight, the connections, the weight is the connections between those neurons. This function is also being wrapped in the activation functions that determine whether to pass the output on to a new neuron within the network. So if I want to take a look like this is how we can talk about in this case, like in the previous example that we saw, in fact. So this is your input layer, this is the hidden layer, and this is the output layer that we see here. Right, so eventually who score more? The score is point, the 70% scored, and this penguin would be the ultimate predictions that is being given through this one, the neural network under the multi-class classifications because there are different type of penguin, but I would like to predict precisely what penguin this deep learning can predict like this. So now, all those things, whether it is machine learning or deep learning, how we can train on the data using algorithms, how we get a model, how the model can be used for predictions and so on and so forth, whether it is deep learning, whether it is machine learning. So we need some kind of tools through which we should be able to perform the task of the training, what we discussed. So that's how we will be getting into a Microsoft Azure cloud platform and identifying a service called Microsoft Azure machine learning service. Through which we can do the training and deploying and managing the machine learning model. It is designed to be used by the data scientist, software engineer, DevOps professionals, and other to manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of the machine learning project, including exploring data and preparing the modeling, training and evaluating the machine learning model, registering and managing the train model, deploying the train models, for use by an application and the services and reviewing and applying the responsible AI principle and the practices on that particular model while I'll be using from my application. Right, so this is how we will be getting into the demo to tell you so what the machine learning workflow look like, what we have been discussing and what kind of problem the machine learning can solve as a 
part of the artificial intelligence, as a subset of the artificial intelligence. So till then, if you have any questions, so you can post your questions into a team or you can unmute your mic and you can talk to me. So, so far what we are learning, so we talk about the definition of artificial intelligence, step number one, what we say, the artificial intelligence can offload the human capability into the application. That is what we have started explaining. Then we talk about the different workload where the artificial intelligence can be used. So we talk about the computer visions, machine learning, document intelligence, knowledge mining, NLP, natural processing language, and eventually the generative AI. These are the different workload under the banner of artificial intelligence. Then we talk about the responsible AI. So if tomorrow, if you have to start building AI system, you will be a responsible AI developers or an architect. So considering the fairness, considering the accountability and responsibilities, considering the privacy and the securities. Right, so that is something as a framework or maybe as a guideline that you have to subscribe to because we say that there should not be any negative impact on the human being from your application and system that you have developed by using the AI tools and technologies. Then we are going back to the machine learning and try and understand the inner working of the machine learning more elaborately. We talk about how the data is going to be collected, like historic data. I have given an example of, of the car manufacturing companies. And then how this data is going to be trained by using algorithms. And after this training, so you'll be able to anticipate a model. The model is going to encapsulate all the knowledge the model gain from the learning and that model can be used by my applications to do all kind of activities on what basis the model was trained whether it is to do the predictions of the car number or something else which is typically driven by the algorithms how to learn and how to train from the data inside the machine learning or deep learning pipeline that we talked about. This deep learning is a subset of the machine learning where the complex problem is being resolved. Mainly the visual interpretations is being done by the deep learning. So if I have to identify an object from a photos, if I have to recognize a human face, from a given photo and tell who that person is. So this kind of task is being done under the deep learning. So we talk about fraud detections. We talk about gaming applications. We talk about driverless car today, auto driving car. So these are the critical workload that is based on the deep learning because they need to really go into a deep while they learn that they cannot make mistake while that is going to be applicable from the different applications going forward. Because you will be completely banking on the artificial system. Right, so artificial system that uh, is responsible for doing your job so you have to be extremely careful like so whether your model is capable of driving a car without a driver model is capable of like recognizing a human 
face to get access to a service, to get access to an airport, to get access to a factory, to get access to a product, to get access to in, in, in your organizations by just simply looking at the face, the, the face identifications, what we are talking about. This is being used in, in the field of deep learning because these are the application of deep learning what I'm talking about. So let us start with the machine learning. And then I will talk about how this deep learning also going to be work. So this is the two core subject or two core component of the artificial intelligence. So we are going to go after a demo through which we are going to use some data set of a historical bicycle rental detail to train a model that predicts the number of bicycle to be rented on a particular day expected on a given day, the based on the seasonal and the metrological features like day, month and seasons and whether it is winter or uh, A summer or maybe spring, whether that day was a holiday or a non holiday, so like you know, considering all the metrological or seasonal features, the model has to predict the number of bike to be rent out on that given day. And they have to learn, the model has to learn from the historic data to, to do this. Now, tomorrow we can go and talk about different AI services. We are going to go and talk about ready-made services that we just need to deploy the service and we can consume from our application. But behind the service, it's all about machine learning and deep learning model who can do this job for us. But we are going into the underlying concept of the artificial intelligence. We are not just using a service and get the functionality out of the box. We are trying to figure out how we can build our own system tomorrow. So then we have to start from the machine learning and deep learning and the underlying concept around the machine learning and deep learning, like what is model, how the model can be trained, what is algorithms, right? So what is called evaluate, evaluating the models before we take the model into the production environment. Yeah, so prompt engineering is not part of this AI 101, but we will be talking about a bit of them in the prompt engineering at the end when I'll talk about the generative AI. So thank you, Syria, so for the question. So I saw it now. Just wait for a couple of minutes. So by the end of this uh, training, so I'll be giving insight to the generative AI also. In that time, I will be giving some insight to the prompt engineering. Okay, so what we are going to do, so this is the demo that I'm going to do now. So let me take you to my virtual machines where I'm going to do the demo.
So I will go and browse my portal. I log into the management portal. And then I will go and create my machine learning, what we talked about. So I'm creating a machine learning as your machine learning workspace. I'm creating a resource group. And then I'm giving the name of the workspace like so I'm just giving a name of my workspace like bike rental workspace. So all good. I'm just taking invest TVS here and selecting all the defaults options from the machine learning service. So this is getting deployed, so it will take one or two minutes to complete the task. Now, as I said, this machine learning is going to learn from the uh, historic data. So where, where I'm going to get those data. So suppose I'm going to get the data from here. So this is the data that we have collected from the 2011 and 2012 under those column names. So day, month, year, season, holiday, weekday, working day. And eventually we need to do the predictions for the rental, the rental value also there. But if I have to go and give a day today, so in the year of 2024, so this model that we are about to build should be able to tell the number of rentants that is going to happen on that particular day because by learning from the historic data, because the data that is being collected from these years, is it is for only, it may not be, use at this moment because this is the past data it may not be relevant in today's context but this is not what we are trying to create a production workload here just to make you understand the machine learning process or machine learning uh, the pipeline what we discuss up from our presentation. So once this is 
done that I can go to the machine learning studio where I can do all kind of activities of training the data and so on and so forth. So we can go to the workspace. I should be able to see my workspace that I have created. That is the workspace that I have created from my machine learning studio. HTTPS ML dot Azure dot com. So if I do not want to create my own model, I can take the model which is already being registered under the model catalog from the different vendors. You can see them. So these are the different vendors who has created. Model under the different categories. These are the different categories that is called inferencing task. So what kind of task in ML language the inference task can be performed? The conversational summarization text generations from the NLP point of view, what we are talking about. From the deep learning point of views, image classifications, image segmentations, and so on and so forth. From the generative point of view, also text generation. So you should be able to create text. From the generative AI, so you get to see those models. All right, so. So you can go and. These are the models like. The text generation model that we have selected from the Llama. That is the model name. The Llama will typically from the Meta. That is Facebook. So if you go and select. The Llama 38 billion. Parameter base a model. So you should be able to see. The detail of those existing model without creating your own model. So we are planning to create our own model, but we can take the model which is pre created by those vendors like hugging face matters. NVIDIA's cohort and so you can see the list of the model on the right hand side. I mean, the vendors from the right hand side who has created their respective model and registered under the Microsoft Azure model registries model catalog. So Meta developed and released the Meta Llama 3 family of the large language model that is basically part of your generative AI, a collection of pre-trained and instructions tuned generative text model in eight to 70 billion size of the parameter size is the number of parameter that is used to train the model. The Llama 3, the instructions tune model are optimized for dialogue use cases and outperform many of the very available open source chat model on common industry rights of benchmark. It's developing their models. We took a great care of the optimize the helpfulness and the safety also. So you can get to see all this model that I'm talking about. So I'm just picking up. So you can also deploy this model on your own infrastructure rather than creating a model from the scratch. So I'm saying I'm starting with a text. I believe the meaning of the life is then. This model will complete your prompt. By generating this kind of text. OK, so this is the capability of the model. The security, what can be done on this model, you should be able to. Know that the artifacts. Right, so. 
This is the artifacts that we can see of the model. The model itself is coming in a form of YML files. Okay, so that is something that we can see. I said this could be the brain of this model what we are looking at at this moment so which version of this model that we would be able to use during the process so if i am convinced with the model what i'm asking so i should be able to deploy the model within my infrastructure i should be able to fine tune this model oh yes that is called fine tuning as i said Yes, we should be able to modify the existing model if you want need to take care of what result into. Yes, you can. That is by doing fine tuning. Right? So this is the fine tuning. Fine tuning a process that you have to kind of go and get your data the training data to be selected so on what you are going to you have to go and upload the data on what the fine tuning will go and have Okay, but we are going back because this is the possibilities, not only just to looking at the model catalog and try to find out what kind of model that we are looking for. So you are going to get the model from the OpenAI also. But these are the license model, you won't be able to deploy directly. So you have to go and create the OpenAI service then only you will be able to deploy inside the OpenAI service because the other one that we get this is, this is the open source that would be made available to us but we can deploy on our infrastructure for that we need to pay for the infrastructure where my model is going to be deployed Right, so now I can go to the one of the authoring tools. The authoring means uh, how can I create my model? I can create by writing a code by going into the notebook. I can do a drag and drop with the help of designer to create the model pipelines, what we discuss, or I can do a tool. I can use a tool called AutoML to create our model. The model we saw from the different vendors from the model catalog. Those model also created using one of these tools, what we are looking at under the, the authoring sections here. So AutoML is one of the most used or no code, low code tools that I don't have to write any code. Right, so I just need to go and select the few dialog box and understand the pipeline of the machine learning and produce the data to an algorithm to learn from the data. The open source models are free, so you need to go and see it like all the models from the hugging face will be free. So then you have to go to the model catalog. Then you have to browse through a model OK, so then you will get to know which models are free and which models are paid. So typically like OpenAI's, Microsoft, NVIDIA's, Coherent, Entropy. So these are the vendors 
model would be always license, but the mainly from the open source point of views, maybe meta or maybe hugging face. The most of the model that we can see from the hugging face is coming from the open source. So that you will be able to know eventually when we are going to, uh, when you are going to explore these tools, the model catalog, and you will be able to anticipate the model who can be used free, the model who actually associated with the licensing model. OK, so I'll go and create a job. I'll be giving a job name like. Pike. So here also I'm giving a name. So the type of there are different type of like you remember uh, that in my tech. I have shown that classification regressions. And these are the different type of that computer visions which typically talks about. Working with those algorithm who can learn from the image or a videos kind of thing. NLP who can learn from a text. To predict based on the text only type using the multi class and multi level classifications or. Name entity recognitions. Computer visions predict using multi class or multi level image classifications, object detections and. Uh, instance segmentation, so this is what we see. But here we are basically going for a predicting a continuous numeric value. So that will come under the type. The machine learning type would be the regression. So that is the what we see. So machine learning task type for this particular experiment. But after type, after selecting a task type, so we need to go and create the data set. So I'm giving the bike data set, the DS, and then we say testing ML to do the prediction on rental so rest is five we would like to get the data in a tabular one so last time we saw this is the url that i'm going to use to take the data from so web file i can Take this URL. So 
it's all fine. Only the first file has a header, so we are going to get the data. This is the data set that we are creating for my machine learning model. Yes, it is the regression, so that would be a linear one to continuously giving you a kind of number as a prediction of the machine learning. So rest is all will go with the default getting into a summary and try to create the data set. Okay, so all good. Then we got my data set. Uh, pick up the data set and key. And now we are going to go and select the column that we would be uh, predicting that we have been talking about for a rental only. So this is the number that we need to predict based on the input values. But there are more configurations that we need to do, like what kind of algorithm that we are going to use. That is something that we need to figure out. Additional configuration setting. So we'll go with the normalized uh, root mean square error. This is the matrix that was used, the matrix used to optimize the model. So what kind of matrix that you will be using to optimize the model by using permutation and combinations of the given model. So this is one of the method that we are using from the machine learning in order to optimize the model. So we can remove this explains the base model also. It says automatically shows explainability on the base model created by AutoML. So it will just say why this particular algorithm was used to train a model. So do you need any kind of explanation? So we don't need that also. And I can give it to the auto ML. I can use uh, I, I do not need to go back and tell my machine learning that what are the possible algorithm that you can use rather than doing that I can also give so let's use these algorithms so one of the algorithms for linear regressions that we can use random forest or light GBM so whichever whichever is appropriate automatically auto ML will pick up the algorithms and applied on the data to learn from the data so there are different algorithms that could be picked up from the list when I go with the regressions or classification or clustering. That is a different subject altogether. But at this moment, we must understand what is algorithms. The algorithm is a program who will make the machine learning or deep learning to understand how to learn from the data. So random forest, light GBM, these are the list of models. Okay, uh, so, so that is something that what we can, select because here we are just, we are trying to find out
what possibly we can or do or what are the steps that we need to figure out or we need to go and use in terms of creating the model. So I'll quickly go and talk about maximum trials, the maximum number of trial. This is basically the each with the different combinations of the algorithms that need to be applied. So we can go and put it three times according to this lab. Maximum concurrent trial also we can go with the three. Matrix score threshold, we put something like 0 0.85. So that if the model achieve and normalize a root mean square error matrix score of 0 0.085 or a less, the job has to end. That is what we are telling at this moment. And matrix threshold also getting, sorry, this is one where we have to go and give it here, sorry. So we'll be using the maximum node to do the training of that particular machines that we are going to create. The rest I will be going with 15 and 15. And we can go and tell this if the training is completed before timing, so I would like to terminate the training also. And here also we talk about the data need to be split into a two part. The training data, 90% of the input data that we receive from the data set would be used for training and the 10% of that data set would be used for validating the model. Because we cannot take the model directly to the production environment until it will go and evaluate the model and give me a report on the models by using some kind of statistical matrix recall and positions and the F1 score. And then I should be able to make use of this model in the productions or maybe make use of this product, uh, model from our application. So I'll go with the default infrastructure where we are going to do the training. So we are using a serverless with the, the size of the virtual machines with the four core with the 14 GB of RAM. So this is the machines that we are giving to do the training job. So we start the job. So it will take a couple of minutes to complete the job. So in the meantime, so what you have asked. It. OK, so there is a question. It says that uh, what is nearest neighbor in context of the machine learning? So this is basically a type of instance based learning used for classifications and regression task in the machine learning. So it is basically is a very simple and intuitive effective approach that the classifies or predict the output or a data point based on the closest data point in the, the space of the data representation. So it could be in a form of distance metrics, the k nearest neighbors. So this is the few 
the technique they use so means the closest data would be considered to do the predictions so while they would be looking through the data and presenting with this. So they can do the classifications by looking into the data set features. So again, I'm saying this is a kind of implicit types. All right, so that will happen in the background. That is what we did in the machine learning. Right, so then we'll go to once it is done, then we'll deploy our own custom model and try to use this model to get the predictions. So it will give me the base model summary also, then I can go to the model and deploy subsequently. But I talked about a couple of more implementation also in a form of the services. So let me go back to my presentations and talking about few more concept around the artificial intelligence from this AI 900. So as I said, do I have to really go back and create model on my own every time to do a task from the artificial intelligence, the answer is no. Okay, so you may not go and create your own model every now and then. So Microsoft has come up with a set of ready-made services. Okay. Microsoft has a set of ready-made services under the different categories. And those services is going to use some ready-made model that is made available by Microsoft to do predictions, to do classification, to do analyzing. So all kind of ready-made services being made available from the Microsoft Cloud Platform that we do not have to build our model from the scratch, like we did in my previous example, in the previous demo. And that's how we get to see the few things of all from the Azure call as Azure AI service. So Azure AI service is a suite of services covering the vision, speech, language, decisions, and the generative AI. What we have discussed in my previous DAC, the workload around the artificial intelligence, including the generative AI, what we are talking about at this moment. So we will be focusing on this as your AI services, how to create as your AI service, how to use as your AI service, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go and create an Azure AI service. The AI service would be a REST service, and that can be consumed from your application. That can be consumed by just making HTTP requests from a postman or something like that, the ready-made tools that we have today. But once you have deployed the service on Microsoft Azure, So let us go and explore the few services from the vision, from the language. So how the Microsoft has come up with those services with default model. You can always do the custom 
you can always create your own model behind those services whenever you need them. That is always possible. But just take a look that do I have to every time go and create my mo own model to do things in a day to day basis uh, from the artificial intelligence point of view? The answer is no, you do not have to go back and until you want your artificial intel intelligence to be used on your own data rather than using on the public data. So that's how the customization will come into the picture. So we'll go and take a look of Azure services. It is not only a one service that we are going to work with, so we are going to work with multiple services. So let me again go back to my workstations where I'm using one minute. So I'll go to the again this list of services that I have come from from the Azure portals. I can go to the Azure AI service here. And uh, we get to see Azure OpenAI. This is for the generative AI. But before that, we are going to create a traditional AI service by selecting one of the service from the list called Azure AI service multi-service account means this service can be used for different tasks unlike a dedicated task that we want to do like only language only kind of you know uh image so both is possible with the help of this particular service so i can go and create this service so i can pick up my existing resource group Go with my the West US. So here I go and say demo AI SRV. I select the pricing tier because any service that we consume from the cloud need to be paid based on their subscription model so under which model which tier i am subscribing this particular service so we should be able to kind of identify that and we should be ready for the bill or an invoice that is going to be generated by microsoft after using this service in a monthly basis So I will go and create this AI service who can do many things. So I can go to the service. So when you create a service, the main component of the service is the key and the endpoint. That today, if I have this key and the endpoint, this is the endpoint and this is the key. So my application will be able to use this service to do all kind of AI functionalities from their applications by having the key and the endpoint. OK. So this is what the core credential of this particular service. 
Now, whether you develop your own application and consume the service or you are going to use this service from a ready-made application, so it's up to you. Now, for example, I want to consume this service from a ready-made portal. Okay. So I want to go with a portal with call as a portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com. So let me re-log into this portal from where I can test that service in different occasions like uh, analyzing an image or analyzing a videos, reading a text from an image, all kind of activities can be done by using this AI service from this portal. Try and log in again. OK, so now we get inside the Vision Studio. And in fact, if I go to the setting, I should be able to see the service that I have created. From my Azure portal, so this service that I'm going to consume from this portal. So let me see this is completed. Uh, this previous model that we have created so I can go and go to the model the algorithm names the base model summary that we get it and we should be able to deploy this model or this version of the model is not being deployable at this moment So this is like standard root. Let me see. This is fine. So we can go to the the coding also. So if I go to the deployment as a web service, so that could be consumed from your application. So bike rental. model so we are using as your container instance as an options we can make it enable authentications and so on and so forth. And we are ready to go and deploy the train model for the bike rental, what we talked about sometime. So what it is saying that, yes, the model got created, but how to use this model? The model need to be deployed on a particular infrastructure. So we used as your container instance, like an infrastructure to deploy this model so in some time from now we should be able to consume the models once the deployment will be successful so model would be available as a rest api so we can consume the model 
from our respective applications, whoever wants to call that model. So now I come back to the previous service that I talked about, the AI services. I went to the portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com to test the service that we deployed under the default model. So these are the default model that is going to be consumed from this service to do different things all together. Okay. So let's use this as a default one. Then we can go back to the Visual Studio. We can start from the, the Vision Studio and we can start from a category called Image Analysis. And there are many tasks that we can perform using that service. The one of the tasks is called Detect Common Object in an Image. I can try out this. And here I'm seeing. So this is the kind of service who use the default model from the Microsoft and try to do the AI activities for me. So what kind of activities that I'm trying to tell? Detect a common object. So in a particular image, so if I select an image, so I will be able to detect those common objects from this image, saying that footwear with 52% score means the prediction score 52%. The laptops, sitting arrangement, the person is 85%, the person 72. This is what the kind of object is being identified from this particular image. Right, so we should be able to kind of also keep changing my image to tell the, tell, tell the detail by the artificial intelligence, what artificial intelligence found from this particular image or identify object from this particular image. That's what we are getting, or that is what we are just looking at. What this kind of service can do. It is not only that we can go to a, another a type of the implementations. The remove the background from an image. Right, so this is something that we can see. So we can pick up an image. So we are going to say that we would like to remove the kind of backgrounds that was initially behind the image is being completely removed. that you can see that background is removed out there. So this is the additional activities also the model can perform on the given images. All right, so that is something that we get to see, the kind of activities, kind of capabilities the model can deliver under the image analysis, what we are looking at. So here we go with the search for a photo within an image retrieval. Right? So it says in order to run this demo, use belongs to the. So at this moment, the resource has to be in East West to do this. So I can go and create another service because. When I was deploying that service, it was on the West US. So I need to deploy the same service in the East US. I should be able to do this task. 
So sample image, you can try out your own image. So retrieve specific content within your photo album. For example, you can query a wedding you attend last summer, your path, your favorite city. You can search for an image based on the content of the image itself rather than relying solely on the manually assigning the keywords or a tag in your queries that you are going to give. All right, so this is the only a kind of uh, limitations of that particular service. So here it is recognize the product on the shelf also. This is something that whether we should be able to. So in order to demo this, use this East US only or West US too. And this is also in preview, so you should be able to kind of to figure out those stuff. But you can still see what is possible under the category of the image analysis. You can create a custom model with image also. You can create your own model. You have to create a project. You have to get your the artifacts to train a model. So eventually you will be able to get your custom model and you can use like those ready-made model that we have been using for a different kind of task under the image analysis. Like we move into the face from the image to the face. So detecting face in an image. So I said this image, how many face that I'm going to. So it doesn't mean that you are going to tell who this person is. It is only identifying human face from this image. But if you want to incorporate that kind of capabilities. So there is no copyright issues at this moment because. You will be providing the data. To train a model. So your consent would be taken before we take the data for training. The model. So it is just identifying the human face, but you are not saying who that person is. The moment you start saying who the person is, then it will come under the PII. The personally identifiable information. That you need to get the consent of the person to train the face to recognize that person. That is another subject in the field of artificial intelligence. But here we are just telling that whether the human in this particular image is. Or whether this human face that we saw, whether they are smiling and angry, like emotional interpretations of this also can be. Me. Whether they are wearing a reading glass or a sunglass, that is also possibly weakened. But this application does not going to tell you everything. It is just to give you the kind of the overviews or maybe the kind of anticipations that you can go back and do the possibilities of those services. But you can get more by writing your own application from the human face, including the identification of the human, recognizing a humans from a photos. So here it's saying that whether this person is wearing a mask or not. Yes, this is saying that yes, there is a face mask. All right, so that is something that we can see out there. That is something to do with. What we talk about the face. Right, so this is also talking about something like face liveliness detection. Detect if the face is an image in a real person. Or a photo. 
right? So this, this can be done. The face life, the only or face life or verification, something like this, by just giving a photo. All right, so you should be able to kind of go with AI face. So you should be able to kind of, if your camera is on, so you are going to go and make use of the AI Vision API access that you have to fill up the detail, then you should be able to kind of go with the face liveliness detections that what we are talking about. But yes, I mean, like what I'm trying to tell you that possibility is immense with those existing model also without creating your own model. Like I can go with the special analysis, basically mean in the videos, the related analysis that we can do. It could be a real time or it could be a recorded videos, but here there are some recorded videos. I can select a particular video in a retail grocery store where the people go to buy foods in a day-to-day -day items. This is what the videos, but through the artificial intelligence, you can queries from the videos. So I want to see from this video sometime in this video, which is recorded, and go and get into this video when someone was wearing a pink jacket. So we should be able to see, identify this person, person with a pink jacket. Right, so we can summarize that also. The videos like converting into. So this is the summary of the entire videos that we can see. We can go to a particular location also. So he said in a grocery store video where were a several noteworthy event that occurred, including spilled liquid on the floor. So we are basically kind of taking the summary of the entire videos that was going on. These are the few events that has happened when that videos according to the time frame also what has happened when you can go to that particular place also to see you can see more time wise right so this is a, another a kind of implementations using the existing model what we say can this be used to create no it is not generative it is not a generative models these are only the model to identify and do the prediction so deep fake is an implementation of generative ai you can create your own videos own character by using Gen AI model only. These are not Gen AI model. Okay. So now we go to the last one called character recognition. So you can go and you can read text from the images. This is what we call OCR. Optical character recognitions that you can see out there. These are the text that you can read from the given images. Now, this is what we have been doing called a virtual perception. The 
the visual perceptions that what we are talking about. Now, like I can do something to do with the language and the text also. Now, I'll be creating a, another service. So I go and select the AI service from the list. I'm getting a language service. So I'll create a language service like create last time. And you see the language capability out of the box that we are getting like this. Sentiment analysis, key phrase. So this is a traditional artificial intelligence, not a generative AI. So here I'm going to select. The another uh, region. So here we can say a demo. Lang AI SRV. And with that, I'm just creating this service. To do all the artificial intelligent activity around the language and the text, the dedicated service, unlike the service that I have created last time, a common service. Okay, so let's go to that one service here. This is my language service. Like last time we create the service, we get the key and the endpoint. Similarly, we are going to get the key and the endpoint for this service also. So if I am going to develop application to deal with the text and the language, Okay, so we will by 2 p.m. and followed by some <clears throat> activities. So I'll be in by 2 p.m. I'll be giving a break in some time, like giving a break of 20 minutes. So I'm about to give the break. So once I start this, so we should be able to take a break of 20 minutes and we'll come back, but we'll end by two o'clock today. Okay, so this is the service that I can use, like I use in a vision portal. I can go and make use of the another portal that is related to the language and the text. This is called language.cognitive.azure.com. I can also sign into this playground, the portal like we did in the vision. So I'll pick up my language service that I have created just now. And I get all kind of activities from this language studio. 
Now I can also select the different kind of categories that you can see. Like I can start from a translating text, summarizing text, understanding the questions and conversational language, classify the text, extract information, and some collective use. So suppose if I go from the extract information, I can try or extract PII, personally identifiable information. The sensitive entities in the text that are associated with an individual with the help of artificial intelligence. So I can pick up. This is a text. So there are male IDs. Right, so this is something come under the PII. So we should be able to kind of detect those. PII from the given text with the help of artificial intelligence. This is a pre built capability used in a name entity recognition, NER to identify the sen sensitive, personally identifiable information in the text and categorize them into a predefined classes of type like a person, address, email, phone number, passport number, bank account number, because these are all come under the PII which used while this particular model was So I can get this information. So he said there are something that we get it in date and time. But the original text that we get, we said the person type. These are few entities that you are getting right there. The email IDs the person name, email IDs, right? So that may be coming under. The green means all other PI that apart from the other entity also, they are trying to kind of identify from the text that I have given to the artificial intelligence. Right, so this is also another example. So we should be able to get the phone number is a PII that we are extracting. The address may be a PII, the persons. So this is something what they are talking about, which is being trained as in person, email ID, phone number, or passport number and bank account number, all would become under the PII of this particular model. And the model would be able to extract those information from the given text. So like that, I can go to some kind of classified text. So the first one was analyzing the sentiment. The kind of sentiment associated with a particular text. You can do the same thing to run this. It says the entire document sentiment is a mix, not positive or not negative. That's a mix kind of sentiment that you can make out from this document. 75% of the positive, but you can go by the sentence by sentence also. Analyzing that. Right, so this is something what we can see out there. So sentiment analysis is one of this task that we do to analyze. I was talking about the reviews. So if somebody is written a review of the product, the AI can yeah transfer floor is not used in this case 
TensorFlow is a machine learning or deep learning libraries. Okay, these are library to use ML and DL model or algorithms. in your Python application. You can train and evaluate the model also okay so these are the things that you can do from the tensorflow that is a library from the pythons through which you would be able to kind of train or evaluate or test the model by writing Python code, by developing Python application. All right, so these are pre-created model may be used by the TensorFlow or any other tool, any other technology that what we see. So you should be able to get it. sentiment and opinions and so on and so forth. So you can go and get it. So like that, we should be able to go and kind of do multiple things, summarizing a text, translating a text from one language to another language. So all these things that we talked about in the beginning, what possibly we can do by using language service, by using NLP, that is possible. OK, so we can develop and so on and so forth. Oh, yes, of course, you can you can do it. If language does not matter, so your AI understand approximately 135 languages. So the input can be any one of those languages that you can see. All right, so with that, I will take a break at this moment for uh, 20 to 25 minutes. We'll be back in 25 minutes and then we'll continue bit of the generative AI. And then we'll end the session for today. All right, so till then, if you have any questions, so you can ask.
somebody is asking how did AI is traditional AI is different from the so traditional AI use to do the classification to do the uh, predictions or we can say predictions and classification but gen ai used for creating new content So that is the difference that I have written out there. You can see this. Uh, hello guys, I shared the AI 900 complimentary learning achievement badge. Please uh, follow the step and uh, get your activated badge. I already mentioned the step. Yeah.
Welcome back from the break. Hope everybody have come from the break. So we are starting now. The last part of this uh, training. So we'll go into the generative AI. So hope everybody can hear me. And uh, you can see my screen also. Yeah, can you see my screen? We are about to start with. The another part of this AI that is generative AI. So let us. Discuss on that. So can you hear me and can you see my screen? So let me know whether you can see the screen or you can. I'm audible to you. Okay, so let me see that the people I can see hit this. Hope you can hear me and hope you can see my screen that I can start the last part of this today's training. Okay. All right, Manish, thank you. So what we are discussing at this moment, we talk about the traditional AI and their implementation. So before I go to the generative AI, let me see what happened to this deployment of the machine learning. This is successfully deployed. I can go to this one. Now for consume, I can write an application. So only two things that I have to get the key of my. Model that is the key that. Uh, we need to go and use in the code. And then the, the predictions. That I have to go and. Say the which month, which day I want to do the prediction of the bike rental. So we need to fill up this data. 
and uh, we should be able to run this applications to get the predictions because now my model is being deployed as a web service and I can make a call to my model using this web service URL. But in order to talk to the web service, we need a key. So if I'm not providing a key, I'm going to get an exception. But if I'm giving a key, I should be given the response, the result that we would be printing. Means that would be the predictions of the bike rental on a given day, on a given year and the month, month with other detail also, holiday, weekday, working day, temperature, humidities and uh, wind speed, all kind of the data that we need to give as an input to get the prediction. So that is done. Now we go back to what I'm about to explain related to the generative AI. So in order to implement the generative AI, so as I say, the generative AI is different from the traditional AI because the generative AI primarily used to create new content. The content could be in a form of text, content could be in a form of images and content could be in a form of, you know, uh, the videos based on the type of model that we are going to use it. So we can go and create the Azure OpenAI service from the Microsoft Azure cloud platform to implement the generative AI. So I pick up the same resource group. Right, so I can go and <clears throat> say here demo gen AI service. And I'll go and create that. Now the generative AI also, if I go and make you understand this one, Generative AI also, if I say so, it is used for creating new content. So it could be in a form of text write image or so these are a different type of content that you can create so traditional ai so we use for prediction Right, so use from classification, etc. Decision making. Now, these traditional AI also driven by ML or DL model. Right, so machine learning and deep learning model, but this also driven by deep learning model called LLM. Large language model, because these are very large in size of parameters in order to deal with language specific term like generating the new content. So how it works, so we have to write the input text to the generative will be called as a prompt. 
and then the output text will be called as a response. to the prompt. So we give a prompt to the LLM. LLM is going to give us the response based on the prompt. If I'm asking LLM to generate the text, then it will generate text and give us a response or image or music and videos. So this is a complete different type of artificial intelligence without human. So AI can generate content. Suppose if I'm asking the LLM to write a story or write a articles or write a, a kind of uh, a blogs. So that LLM can or the LLM will be able to write that kind of content or generate that kind of content. OK, so this is how it is two different type of artificial intelligence, but yes, it is not that generative AI is overlook what that hasn't happened in the field of artificial intelligence. This is all about going along with what the model has learned from the traditional and what model is learning new in order to create the content. So enhancement on the traditional machine learning model or deep learning model has happened with the help of something called transformer model. Because based on this transformer model, all the LLM is being mainly Right now, the example of LLM would be something like GPT to so GPT a three or GPT three point five. GPT 4, GPT 4, O from the OpenAI. OpenAI is an organization, so these are the model. Like there are multiple from Matas, from Hugging Face, from NVIDIA's. So you're going to get or maybe something like. Uh, right, so these are. Uh, the few models. Embeddings or whisper and these are the different models that will be uh, that will come from the open AI. LLP. Right, so we can use this model like one of the application today most popular called chat GPT. Who use. Right, so who use. These model in order to generate content, it's just an application. Or you can say tool. We use those models to generate the new content. OK, so that is something that we must understand. Yes, of course, these are also different models, so you can include Gemini or whatever the model. If the model is being used publicly to access from here, you can use by using external API support. So this model can be consumed. LLM can be consumed. Using API, so only you need the key to consume this model from your application. So it could be a license based model or it could be a OSS open source model.
right? And we can fine tune the model also that is coming from OpenAI or from Meta or maybe from the hugging piece or maybe from the NVIDIA's. <clears throat> so those model will be made available to us in two forms of so proprietary models where the license will come into the pixel. The model which is freely available that is from the open source. So you can use both. These model, the paid model, you have to pay and open source. You can make use of them freely from your application. Let's take a look uh, of this particular service that I'm creating a, as your OpenAI service now. Then I will go to my studio again. And I said, I have a service and I'm going to use LLM that is called foundation model. OK, I'm going to use the foundation models from this service and I'm going to use it through this portal. Now, if I go to the model, I can see the list of model available. These are the list of model available. You can see including the latest. This model is primarily coming from the OpenAI because the Microsoft has invested on the OpenAI. And all the model that is created at OpenAI is being made available from the Microsoft Azure. I can directly go to the OpenAI also. I can use it directly from their product. Like one of the product is a chat GPT. You can see in the product. So I can log in into that product. So it will take me to the chat GPTs where I can start doing the conversation by selecting this models, the models that we are talking about, the foundation model. Right, so that is one from the outside of the Microsoft Azure. Right, but inside the Microsoft Azure also we get same set of model. So outside you can see this is the model that I'm talking about. So you can also create an account from the OpenAI to get a chat GPT's interface. This is a tool through which we can interact with those models in order to generate the content. So there are some. Kind of. What we said. <laughs> There's a one example of the prompt that you can see out there. So you can write a prompt, so you should be able to get an answer here. So you can write a hello. You say hello, what is the capital of Assam or the, the, the Japan or whatever it may be. Because this is the context that we are talking about. Let's start improving the geography skill by quizzing me on the world capital. So I'm setting this context. You can start by asking me the capital of the countries of your assoys. Right, so this is something. I can go and write this. Right, so. I mean, like, you know, this can be done from internally also from here also after deploying that, but the concept is the same how to generate this one. Like. Uh, we can go and use different kind of tasks. Like suppose I want to give a prompt 
like this. So translate when is the breakfast will serve in Spanish. So first I will go and clear this. So you can see, you can listen to that. Okay, so this is something that happened. We can go and write something like this also. Write a JD in a particular language. And I can say write the same in Hindi. So this is the JD of a cloud architect. So you can see that how they are generating the content, the job of Yes, so there would be a difference. The questions that is come, there is a difference between the model because if you are using this model, so you won't be able to get the latest data like I'm getting from the GPT 4.0. Okay, there is a difference because the GPT 3.5 was created sometime in 2022. At that point in time, what was the information is given to learn from? It is limited to the latest in compared to the latest model, which is, which is being trained on the latest data. And not only that, this latest model can find data from the internet at real time also, which is not possible with the 3.5. Okay, so there is a difference. The functional difference is there. Right, so functionally they are with the less capable in compared to this model. Okay, so that is something that you need to figure out. Like I go and select this and I say, what is the population of India? So it says as my last update, the population of India is 1.3 million, but that may not be the case today. So if I go and change this to the GPT-40, the same questions that I would like to ask. This time I get this feedback also, and this other icon also to read this. You see, it is coming from the 2024, the latest one, 1.4 billion. This is how they are different because this model can get data at real time from internet also. If this model is not known on a particular subject to respond, to create response for your prompt that you are giving. Right, so this is all what we can see. The another subject in the generative AI is all about 
writing the effective prompt. So how you can write a prompt effectively, I can go and show you here. So suppose I go to my, and one of this model that I want to deploy. So I'll pick up the model which can be deployed. So I can say my GPT 4.0. That is the model that I'm deploying. The model got successfully deployed under my service. So I can consume this model using similar kind of the window that we get. So here also I, I select the model and I can start doing the conversation. So it will take some time because the deployment will take approximately five minutes to start working with this. I can create another one like uh, DAL3. So let me see that model also. I refresh my browser that they should be able to anticipate the new deployment that we have done. Yes. So not only accuracies like uh, the relevant informations. It is not about 1.3 or, but sometime something was not innovated that point in time when those model was created. The whole model was created. So those model do not know what has happened lately in a particular subject or domain. But when you create a latest model, the latest model would be aware of what has happened recently on that particular subject. So they are more contextually aware with the latest informations. When you go with the latest model from the LLM families. OK, so I can go to the DAL E. So here is the DAL E. DAL E is a model LLM who can generate new images. So I select this model and I'm giving a text to create an image. This is called multi model model. An elephant on a stake board in a style of Picasso to be created. So I just try and generate this image. So we should be able to get a new original image, which we cannot find in internet, that is created by the DAL E model, which is specifically designed to create image from the text. If I'm not liking this image, we can regenerate this image also to get a, another image by making a, another call to the DAL E model from this playground by selecting the model because I'm selecting the DAL E3 that is the latest model in the family of DAL E. So this is something what we can get to more the viewsifies this image of whatever the prompt that we are writing at this moment.
Right, so like that, I can go to the text base, the NLP base model also. So let me clear this. So I can say hello now. So now my model has responded. I can start asking the same questions. So I'm giving a kind of prompt, like for doing any kind of research. So what is the population each country in Europe? So I get to see this. I can go and modify my prompt to get more on this. Please format in a table and order it from the largest to the... So this is prompt engineering because you have to tell what you want. This time I want the output to be in a form of the table or something like this. Yes, so you can create your own chatbot by having your own data like. So there is a tabular format that you get. In fact, you can keep changing your <coughs> the prompt to get more out of the existing response they are giving it. So this time you want the population growth percentage along with the data also. And finally, you say, OK, whatever the data that is being given by the prompt, so I want to convert in a CSV, comma separated values. I just because your GPT model understand the conversations. It's like a human. You are talking to a human. So they retain the context of the conversation. They can retain the context of the conversation. So you should be able to do the conversations in the same topic one after another without going back to the the point of interest on what this conversation was started in the beginning. Okay, so this is really interesting to see. Like, for example, same thing, I can do it from the outside also because I'm using the same model from the Microsoft Azure as well as so Microsoft Azure also giving a playground here. Also, we get an interface to do this. Like if I say as a developer. Write a Python. Code. To explain. Deep learning. You can see that. It is not only producing the code, it is explaining that every single line is being written in this code. Right, so you're taking about all these libraries. Or you can give a specification. Using. Right, TensorFlow. A library.
that is also possible because you are giving a clear instructions. So now you are using tensorflow.caras to write this application to explain the deep learning with the explanations. Above code. Write the test cases of, of the above code. That is also, you are going to go and write the test cases. Now, the possibility is limitless. What we are looking at at this moment, as I said, this is pretty fast and pretty elaborative what you would like to do. In fact, from the same, I can go and write a prompt to generate image also. Create a picture of a dog. flying in the blue sky. So this is something what we got from the GPT-4 because GPT-4 is a multi-model model. Okay, so these are called multi-model. Right, so this kind of interface, you get it from the Microsoft Azure. What we are doing, the same thing. This kind of interface that you are going to get it from or you can go to an open source like Hugging Face. So you should be able to get the similar kind of so these are the different models All right so these are the different models that is being used so microsoft has five three mini k3 instance Lightweighted state of art open model built up on data set use. So I can use this open model also without paying, it is free. If they do not know, you can get it from the web also. So here we can say what is. Right, so that is the questions that I'm making. This is the prompt. So you say it's in April 2023 because this is what the last census happened there in China. And now I say, what about India? Like it's a human, I did not have to tell explicitly Tell me the population of India. I can simply go and say, what about this? It's a 1.3.8 billion people. 
But if I use this, this time, that says for relevancy, you can go to the web and get information and create. All right. So this is something we got more on these things. Right, so this is how you get a difference number because now it has gone to the and giving more information, elaborative information by finding from the internet also. So we can collaborate information in order to generate one from the internet also. So you can go to the huggingface.co and chat so you should be able to log into the hugging face chat applications without paying and you should be able to use these models these are the different models that we talked about at this moment i'm using this model like last time we can generate some data also as a developer if you want to be used in your uh, application so create a list of 10 movies with following details movie name movie release length box office performance and the format list as a json array So you can see the list of the movie that got created. I can copy this. All right, so that is what you can say. You can continue doing adding more so you can see add the director name there. So you're going to add this. The director name also along with what movie list was generated so we got the director name this time Okay, so we need to repeatedly uh, going and making use of it. So we can continue what you want sort of things like uh, you can do the stop generating in between. So one thing that we must understand what we are talking about at this moment, creating content with your use cases is important. under which you would like to create content. Under the prompt, the prompt is important, what prompt that you are, are writing. So you can give some kind of the text also. Suppose I'm 
giving this text and say, write a summary. of above text. Okay, so now we go and so whatever you have written, so we need a summary of that particular text. Without going into web from the model itself, I need a response. So we can give data also in a form of file also. Oh, I have to change the model. This model won't be applicable to do this. So I'll go and change the model. I'll use the Llama model. Yeah. yeah, so this is like giving some kind of description of this text about the bidirectional encoder representation for transformer. But yes, I mean, the bottom line that you must understand at this moment that we are using this. All the tools and application. Driven by large language model created by different vendors, OpenAI. Or maybe Microsoft or maybe Anthropic or maybe NVIDIA or maybe Hugging Faces. So we are using those LLM. Behind the services, behind our interface to generate content, but we can create or we can control. On the content by. Dealing with the prompt, so how I want the response to be generated. So all can be done by writing an effective prompt. And that is one thing called prompt engineering. Like we say, I want my data to be in tabular format. Right, so that is basically clearly you are talking about. So you can tell LLM what. You want like set the tone of the LLM also possible. OK, so this is something. What we need to do from this, so I will be winding off now. So if you have any questions before that, I'll be deleting my resource group, what we have created. All right, then I uh, so hope everybody got the insight to the artificial intelligence specifically from the Microsoft Azure AI ecosystem. So we talk about different services. We talk about the implementation of those services. And then getting into the another world of the artificial intelligence call generative AI and we see we saw the different tools and application around the generative AI and how generative AI is different from the traditional one.
Thank you, uh, Deepen. I mean, like uh, this was a, a, a bit overview. So look forward to have more deep dive the session. Thank you once again, all of you for attending this session. Uh, thank you, sir, for this great session. Guys, I already shared the feedback form. Before leaving the session, please make sure you fill this feedback form. Yeah, thank you, RC. So I request all of you to please uh, fill the feedback form that is being given to you. You can see in the team chat. Just click on the link and submit the feedback form. Okay, so what you are asking? Emotion detection is being one of the part of your uh, what you call is artificial intelligence, but you say natural computational processing. This is also being known as a sentiment analysis in the significant task in a neural computational processing, which aim it to identify and analyze the subjective information in the text and data. So this is something that you can in brief, you should know, like sentiment analysis, emotion recognitions. The objective of the emotion re recognition is all about to identify specific emotion expressed in the text going beyond general sentiment to detect specific feeling like joy, fear, anger, and surprise, etc. All right, so hope you got that. Yeah, so you are asking that takes Lob is a Python library. Okay, the last one, what you are asking. That is being used basically to deal with the NLP task. Thank you. 